All right, guys. So now that we have all the cards that could be on the table, we need to start setting up the system that will basically predict everything that could happen. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would say we should create a deck. So a deck of 52 cards. And let's go ahead and do that now. So <clears throat> a deck of cards has 52 cards, uh, obviously, and they're divided into basically two big groups here. First is going to be four types, and each one has 13 cards. Now, as we did here, we're going to have to do the exact same system starting from zero. So this will be our type, and this will be our number. So here's a number. Here's our type, so this connects to this. Uh, all we need to do is add them up and output them through these and then see the results. And run. And there we go. So it goes from 414 all the way to 402. Let me get, just get this a little bigger. There we go. So here is an entire deck right here. And as you can see, 4321, 4321, 4321. I'm not going to explain it all, but there they are an entire deck, each kind. And from 14 being the ace, 13 king, 12 queen, 11 jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So now we have an entire deck simply like we created this so fast so that is amazing now the problem is that this is in a 2d array um, even though I would like it to remain as a 2d array because in this format it's actually probably easier to see things and uh, see if they work because I could just take for example the first row here and just from that, figure out if it is equal to something or not. Uh, what I mean is, for example, if you have five diamonds, as you can see here. So these are all the diamonds here, right? So I can just eliminate those three and take these and basically see if there's five. If there are five of them there, you got it. If not, you didn't. And then as far as the two of a kind, three of a kind, and so on, I can just add them horizontally, right? Uh, I mean vertically. So I could add these two here and see if I get a two or not. Then add these two and see if I get it. Basically count, not add. I'm sorry, I keep saying add. Um, I will get into what I mean in a bit. So this is a standard deck. So I'm going to keep this and I'm going to call this a standard deck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and arrange this up and be right back. So here we are, we have a standard deck right here. <clears throat> now, as I said, this makes later on the process of figuring out what is what much easier. Now, let me go ahead and create the same thing just in an empty initialized array and have everything set to zero and create a constant of 4 and a constant of 13. Uh, I actually think those may need to be uh, reversed. I think the first one is going to be the, the columns, not the rows. Oh, no, perfect. There we go. So now we have an initialized empty array and the initialized standard deck. So Basically, what I'm doing now is just trying to illustrate what I was uh, implying with what I said. So let's go ahead and do a for loop. So now this for loop will get into it this. Uh -huh. I'm, sh I'm curious how many times does this run? Does it run 13 or does it run the entire length? Is that going to give me four numbers or one number? 0, 1, 2, and 3. It's interesting. So this ran three times. So right now we have another one in here. 
So it's doing them row by row. And this is actually no problem. We can do this with that as well. We run a second for loop to get them out as one by one. You'll see what I mean here. So now, oh, there. <clears throat> so this first one index, basically this here is simply each row by itself. And then here now we have every single individual point. Uh, now we know we have all these points here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to index this just to make uh, my proof of uh, concept index array. I'm gonna index. Right. Uh, sorry, guys. I would like to take all this and have my working area below this, not above it. There we go. So now I'd like to index this top array just to get one value out of it. And now all I need to do is check if this value is equal to this value and it's going to be true or false. I can easily convert true or false to 0 or 1 and if it is true this value is the value that will be outputted from here and this will create a... oh I just realized we don't even need this initialization I did not realize this before huh that is funny here's, here's basically what just happened and I'm gonna run this and as you can see the only one is for number 205 which is this one the first number is 205 see how pretty that is perfect and pretty uh, now I know I just said I don't think I need this but I just realized I might actually need it uh, I'm gonna create another for loop have this value go through in a shift register format and have this index through all the way back in this one will need to be this initial constant right there uh, and now something I had not addressed earlier I have been dealing with everything in this single point not this orange color and the reason I was doing that is because the orange or what I'm calling the orange color actually is bad in this respect because what it ends up doing is it ends up um, um, using more RAM because it's a 15 point precision number so these blue numbers are much easier to work with this number a normal numeric constant than a double numeric constant because this is double precision it can go up to I think point like point and 15 numbers after that and it will have to carry that in the RAM even if they are zero I believe don't, don't quote me on that so what am I trying to do here uh, what I'm trying to do here is to take the numbers from here so I actually should not have connected those should connect those and check if each one of these is equal to that or not and this will give me an output right here uh, this output I would like it to combine itself so I'm gonna put it in a bundle in a one-point bundle and get this to come out of here create an indicator no no see I don't want that So now what ended up happening is it creates it for all of them millions of times. No. I want it to do it only once and add it. So this number from here will need to be inputted in the same fashion as the this index. And then I would like it to output this will output a 0 or 1 and then let's see is this not equal to 0 so if this is true I would like it to take an either or now 
between this or that, this or that, and I'll put that as a number, and this will be my final, oh, why is this 3? Because this is running 8 times, so we need to take this to a shift register and have this enter into the shift register and create an indicator right there. There we go. Um, I will explain this in more detail in just a second, guys. So let me just run and make sure it works. This takes a while, obviously. So here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can see the ones, where the ones are and where the zeros are. So basically, if I run this continuously, I'm not sure how fast there it is, just changed right there. So as long as I'm changing in diamonds, it's working. Changing in other colors is working. If I have four aces, I can have four aces with diamonds. There we go. We have three aces. See, that's what I meant. Now, if I put a space, uh, there we go. Now we have four aces. It's very easy to find the four aces. Uh, if I have five diamonds, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four. So if I add one more diamond here, there we go. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. I have five diamonds. Just by adding up the column, the rows, uh, the yeah the rows I can get how many columns I have just by adding up these I can tell you how many uh, twos or threes I have so it's very very easy to uh, go through the system now that we have it this way wow this looks pretty complicated uh, I could replace this entire thing here with just a simple create constant this will create an empty constant uh, let me see if this will work though. Yeah, uh, there's a tricky thing with constants. I really don't like it is that if they don't have the first initialized number, things just go haywire. At, yeah, I don't want to use this. I don't like it. I know this is my system. I'm going to use that. So there we go. So we have a uh, standard deck, a full standard uh, deck right here, which I'm going to put that in a box by itself and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish arranging the uh, this system right here which basically all the system does is takes in our input of array numbers whatever this array is in this case we're taking this is the last step this is the river step right zero prediction used so far this is the river in the river basically when you run it it's going to give me all possibilities the river uh, one thing I did not discuss is what happens when we have multiple possibilities so this thing will need to be generated for every single possibility and we'll get into that in another episode all right uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this and get back to you guys and there we go guys so by simplifying this into another two blocks, this block creates the standard, I call it 4x13, 52 decks, 52 uh, card deck. Uh, there we go, in uh, 4x13, that's why I specified it. Uh, while this one here, basically this is what it uh, comes down to, is going to check the cards, create the deck of zeros and ones for our analysis. And there's our deck of zeros and ones. Um, now we can do an analysis. Now, before I get that far ahead, we need to be able to create a system where there's going to be multiple versions of this array. So this is a seven card array, and this is going to be crucial later on. We might have to create here. Actually, I'm 100% sure we're going to have to create an unbundling system perhaps here. Or, if not an unbundling, then we might have to put the entire system in one more end loop. Uh, we'll check that later. So, there we go. This should be it for this episode. We have created now a system where we can easily detect what numbers are going on. So, here there's, for example, three of a kind. There's three aces. Uh, we can add a fourth ace. Now we have a four. Uh, so that is it. Yeah. Next time, uh, I would say we can get into doing some basic analysis, perhaps. 
or maybe we shall start creating multiple versions. I think we should create multiple uh, probability uh, matrices first, just to see how uh, we're going to have to change this part of the system. So this one here needs some changing, uh, because this here is just doing an array based on a single uh, set of numbers. So we're going to have multiple sets of numbers, which needs to create multiple sets of these arrays. And we're going to add this either as a third system into the array or as a added uh, cluster combo. I'm not sure which one would be faster for the system. Uh, we shall have to wait and see. All right. I will see you guys in our next episode. And bye.